the Garmin Tread Overland Edition and the Garmin Overlander. What's the difference? Well, apart from the pretty obvious couple of things that you can see immediately, they're actually quite similar. What we're going to be doing today is taking a look at the everyday use of both of these particular devices and checking out how they're similar, but also how they're different. For what you're going to be using them for, for the most part, which is just general navigation around the city and also a little bit of off-road navigation, they'll actually perform quite similarly. But what we really want to focus on is the different ways in how they actually execute what you need them to do. So let's get four wheels on the road and check it out. This week we're going to take a look at more of the differences between the Tread and the Overlander. So what we're trying to do in comparison of these two units is compare first the applications and parts of the unit that you'll be using first. So that's why we've gone through the map first. The next thing that's a little bit of a uh, very similar actual view is the track recorder. You see you've got similar information. This is something that I use quite often. Uh, it's a similar screen between the two units, just basically start on both and you've got your distance traveled, your moving average, all the rest of it. One thing that is a slight point of difference on the Tread Overland Edition though, is you can add what's called a split here. So if you wanted to split your route up, the first part there took me 14 seconds, the next part took me 19. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an indicator anyway, just to let you know what's going on. All right, in stopping between the two, exactly the same thing, save, save to Garmin Explore or discard. I'm discarding both of these. So it's a pretty similar view between the two. Other comparisons that are pretty much similar between the two units is your altimeter, barometer and compass, your ABC. We've mentioned this previously on the Overlander when we've taken a look at it. Completely similar looking screens, doing exactly the same thing. Covering off a few more things that are absolutely similar and the same, you can select on your icon on the screen, find out where you are, you can save your current location, with your uh, altitude, uh, with your latitude data and your elevation data, your nearest junctions, nearest hospitals, police stations, etc., and fuel. So not a lot has changed in that respect. Other things that be using that you will be using quite often is the search. Now I've actually set a larger screen up here for a. I've actually set a larger icon up here on the screen for a search, so it's a little bit different. There are different things you can set up on the screens, but uh, what I'm going to be doing is basically the same thing. I'm going to be selecting where to. Now once you get to this screen, it's pretty much the same, but there's a couple of differences. What you'll see here on the Overlander is you've got the Explore, which we mentioned just previously. Similar things that are available on both are Go Home, uh, iOverlander, HEMA, etc. All quite similar things. But there are some different things. You have things like fuel prices. I haven't actually loaded up that information as yet because I don't have it connected. What you can do on both units is set a home location from here as well, or you can remove or add different shortcuts. Another one of the differences in terms of everyday use that you'll notice immediately between the two is the amount of information that you have in terms of extra data that you can have on the side screens. For the Overlander here, you've just got very similar stuff to what you have for the Tread Overland. You've got up ahead, trip data, etc. Pitch and roll, same thing. Some big functionality that has now been added in to the Tread Overland Edition. One of the things I absolutely love, and I mentioned it in a previous video, is that you now have weather available on here as well. 
So if you've hooked up your phone via the Tread app to the uh, Overlander here, you can see all of the weather data, which is fantastic. It's one thing that's definitely a little bit different. Another of the things that you'll notice as a big point of difference on here on the Tread is the music button here. So currently I'm connected to my Galaxy Note and if I press play here, that'll actually play Bluetooth music from my phone to the Tread. So what you can do is hook up a Bluetooth headset, quite simply, just by going to Bluetooth here, pairing a new device, which we're not going to do at the moment. And it's as simple as that. So you can just connect a Bluetooth device and connect a headset and play music through there. Now, previously when we were talking about what's available in terms of screens while you're driving, comparatively between the two, you also had music player. Now, as you'll see, there's all my information from my phone there. So if you wanted to have the functionality where you're playing music through here or playing music through your Bluetooth headset, it's available and you can actually have the data running as a little side screen while you're driving. So quite handy and a little bit different. Another of the slightly different uh, things in terms of functionality between the two is looking at the campground screen. I've just gotten to it a slightly different way. You can put an icon on the main screen for campgrounds similar to what it is on the Overlander. But what you actually do have now is your map view sitting on the side. With that extra real estate on the screen, on the tread, you've actually got that functionality and that space now to be able to do that. So I find that actually to be quite handy. So if we were just looking at any of the places that we wanted to go to there, it's much the same thing in terms of navigating to your destination. However, that we mentioned earlier, in terms of adding the destination to a route, it's done slightly differently. It's done in map view on the tread and it's done in explore view or route view on the Overlander. So slightly different way of doing things, but the same outcome. Both of these units also had their owner's manuals already installed on them. So if you need to know how to use any of the functionality that's actually available on here, you can just uh, select on the manual. A little further to my point in terms of functionality that's been removed or replaced with uh, different things between the Overlander and the Tread is the rear view camera option. It's not something that's relevant to me, but to some of you out there it may be. You can actually connect uh, via Bluetooth a rear view camera on the Overlander, but that functionality is now gone on the tread. Now one final point in terms of everyday use, and this is a really big one in terms of differences between the two units. Okay, Garmin. Say a command. Find address. Speak an address in Australia. Now we've actually covered voice activation in previous videos on the Garmin Overlander, but on the Tread Edition, that's one major thing that's actually missing. There's two really big points of difference so far with the two units. And if we go to apps here, we can see one of them for a start is inReach. Now there is inReach functionality that's available on the Overlander, but the Garmin Tread Overland Edition has, as you'll see quite obviously on top here, it has the inReach device actually now installed in the unit. I actually don't have the inReach activated on the Overland Edition here, but you can actually have that as a side screen as well. You can have that sitting as some information on your side screen. Next up, the Garmin Tread Overland Edition here has group ride where the Overlander is a little bit different. It's purely a navigation device. Touring around with other people in other vehicles, you can start group ride activities. You can also see here that there is a radio button on the Tread. So you can actually pair a radio. The Tread Overland Edition and the various other editions that are actually available for that unit enable things like a CB, like a fist mic, similar to this like I have here, 
which you can actually have running out of the tread. Right, well in terms of general use, I think we've pretty much covered what I need to cover for what most people would use the units for. There are further things that I could go into, but it's really, really fine-tuned things. And I guess what I will say is, if you'd like me to go into some further depth later on, uh, feel free to leave me a comment down below in the video and I'll be happy to uh, take a look at some different functionality compared between the two units. I'm going to be keeping both of these units for a little while so I can do a comparative uh, view of things in terms of navigation for quite some time. I'm going to be leaving both of them sitting here in the truck and I'll be using both of them to navigate and just comparing them side by side just to you know see how they com how they stack up in terms of general use. An apples to apples comparison of the two units is not overly fair but comparatively this is an upgrade in terms of hardware, screen, general functionality. So this unit is a little bit more specialized and I guess it's a really good time to sort of mention now that these two units are slightly different and for slightly different uses. So one unit might actually be beneficial to you in some ways and not in others. Different units are gonna suit different people for different things. All right, well that's gonna cover us for this week. Don't forget if you're getting some value from this video and my channel to leave a thumbs up with that like button below. Also leave some comments for me, it's really greatly appreciated. And subscribe and click that notification bell if you haven't already as well. And we'll see you next time we get four wheels on the road.